Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we are going to do the uh, next uh, lesson here, which is on uh, geometric relationships, and we're going to prove those. And this is 2-6 from Big Ideas. Um, we've talked about different proofs, and the next kind of proof that I'm going to introduce you guys to is called a flow chart proof. Some books call it a flow proof. But basically, we're going to use, it's the same situation. We're going to have statements and reasons, as before, but we're going to use boxes and arrows to show the logical argument. So instead of doing the T-chart like this, statements and reasons, steps, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to just put these in boxes. So this would go to the next step, step two, and then to the next step, step three, and so on. And let's take a look at the first one here, which is referred to as the right angles congruence theorem, and it's just Pretty simple. All right angles are congruent. Now, this is a theorem. Why? Because we can prove it. So let's take a look at a flowchart proof to prove this. And right here, here it is, and it says given angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. All right, so here's our flowchart. Let's first do it with a, with a two-column. Let's take a look down here at a two-column proof. And then I'll explain how it relates to the flowchart proof. Okay, first statement is they're given. They're right angles. Well, what do we know if they're right angles? That means the measure of angle 1 is 90. The measure of angle 2 is 90. Because that's by definition. Well, if 1 is 90 and 2 is 90, then you could say the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2 by transitive. You could have also put substitution there, which means angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by definition of congruent angles. Here's the same exact thing in a flowchart proof. You put the statement in the box, like this, angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles, and you put the reason underneath the box, so that would be given. Then you put an arrowhead to your second step. You could have gone across, it doesn't really matter. Typically we'll start off, we'll go down, and then we move our way across. Next I'm going to say angle 1 is 90, the measure of angle 2 is 90, and here's the reason again, underneath the box of the statement. The arrow to the next step, and the reason underneath, the arrow to the next step, our statement's in the box, and our reason is written underneath. So that's a flowchart proof. You can see how it relates to a two-column proof. It just makes it a little bit more visual so you could see the progression. Um, some, some teachers really like flowchart proofs. I think you guys tend to do a little bit better with just writing it out as a logical two-column proof. So let's take a look at the next page. And then we could do proofs through flowchart proofs. And we'll practice uh, various ones like that. All right, so thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, so the next theorem that we have here is a congruent supplements theorem. And this one says, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or two congruent angles, then they are congruent. So take a look at what we have here in this situation. You have angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. That would make 1 congruent to 3. And this is just by a transitive property. That's all it is. It's just a transitive property. If this one is supplementary to this one, and this one is supplementary to that one, then these two have to be the same. And then we have the same thing with the congruent complements theorem. So if two angles are complementary to the same angle or to congruent angles, and they are congruent. So here it's saying if 4 and 5 are complementary, but then 6 and 5 are complementary, well, then 4 and 6 have to be the same. Um, <clears throat> to prove the congruent supplements theorem, you must prove two cases, one with the angles supplementary to the same and one with the angles uh, supplementary to congruent. So for each of those, you have to do the two situations where if it is the same angle or if they are the uh, completely different ones. <clears throat> and this is pretty much one big transitive step. Now let's talk about another form of proving things, and this is a paragraph proof. Again, it's the same exact thing as a T-chart, statements and reasons. You start with step one and reason one, step two and reason two, but you just write it in words, like a paragraph. So if we are given blah, 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 right there. And the next step, you could say, then we can say, say your statement, by, and then say your reason. 
So those are the steps we could take in a paragraph proof. So we're just using statements and reasons in sentences and paragraphs. So let's take a look at this. It says two intersecting lines right here form pairs of vertical angles and linear pairs. The linear pair postulate formally states the relationship between linear pairs. So you can use this to prove the vertical angles congruence theorem. So we've got this as a linear pair, which we already know. A linear pair is basically um, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So this is a linear pair, two adjacent supplementary angles. So that's one and two. Now, this will help prove the vertical angle congruence theorem, which is all vertical angles are congruent. And I showed you this in a lesson before, that all you needed to do was you set this up, and they do the proof here. But you set this up, or you're actually you're going to do the proof in the homework, but they set this up as, you could say, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, or you can be set up as you're given, we'll say line L and line K, right here if I call this line L, line K, that they intersect, and then you got to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 and angle 2 to congruent to angle 4. So what you can do with this proof is say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 add up to be 180 because they form a linear pair, 2 and 3 add up to be 180 because they form a linear pair, and then you can use a transitive property to show 1 is congruent to 3. You can also do it through the supplements theorem as well. You can use that to show that the vertical angles will be congruent. So that's the basics of this lesson, but we're going to do a lot of different proofs, um, and we're going to save those right here uh, for the in-class part. Okay, so um, the key today was just knowing that we could do proofs with paragraph proofs,